Hello there. And now for a quick update from the UK-EU Brexit trade negotiations. While Anna Soubry wants a, yes you got it, a Brexit extension. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. Now, just in case you haven't heard, the breaking news from the press is that Joe Biden will now be the next US president. And it appears that Keir Starmer was the first UK politician to congratulate him. Now, while news had been emerging from various sources that a Brexit trade deal was maybe imminent, others had been saying no and others were claiming one side or the other had caved in. But the truth is that nothing has happened. Or more accurately, on the surface, nothing's happened. Number 10 issued a press release today saying... Prime Minister Boris Johnson today spoke with the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen for a stock take on the progress in the negotiations between the UK and the EU. The Prime Minister set out that while some progress had been made in recent discussions, significant differences remain in a number of areas, including the so-called level playing field and fish the Prime Minister and President agreed that their negotiating teams would continue talks in London next week, beginning on Monday, in order to redouble efforts to reach a deal. They agreed to remain in personal contact about the negotiations. And in response, the UK Chief Brexit negotiator Lord David Frost tweeted out a concise message saying... Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Commission President von der Leyen spoke today about our negotiations with the EU. My talks with Michel Barnier will continue in London on Monday. Now, did I detect a slight sigh in there somewhere? And let's hope none of the EU team are Denmark-based – because the suspected outbreak of a possibly mutated form of COVID-19 in Denmark has forced the mass slaughter of 17 million mink and resulted in the UK banning visitors from the country entering the UK. And the UK Transport Secretary Grant Shapps tweeted, This decision to act quickly follows on from health authorities in Denmark reporting widespread outbreaks of coronavirus in mink farms. Keeping the UK public safe remains our top priority. But you have to wonder how effective that will be without Denmark becoming sealed off from the rest of the European Union. But with air corridors between UK and both Germany and Sweden falling away, how long before the UK becomes totally isolated? Especially as news emerges that this is not an isolated issue. The Telegraph is reporting that... New coronavirus cases linked to mink farms have been discovered in six countries, including Italy, the Netherlands and Spain, the World Health Organization has warned. Now, how much longer can these Brexit talks really be dragged out? Surely there are only so many ways that Michel Barnier can demand that the EU must prevail over a level playing field governance and our fishing grounds, and only one way for Frosty to say no. You have to wonder if the negotiating teams get into their talks rooms, shut the doors, put the kettle on and dig out the Scrabble chess and drafts boards. Or maybe some of them bring their patonk bulls or golf putters and practice their techniques on the plush carpets to while away the hours. Or maybe even bring sleeping bags and the odd hammock. Now, the Express does quote a source close to the negotiations as saying, It's now clear that the process could allow for an agreement, but it's a shame this is having to be done so quickly because of the EU's foot-dragging until very recently. And there is still a long way to go. A deal is by no means certain unless we see a change of approach from Michel Barnier and his team. 
and it also quotes a UK government source saying, Unfortunately, we haven't achieved as much as we'd hoped during this intensive talk so far. We still need more realism from the EU. They can't expect us to agree to a treaty under which we can't move away from the EU norms in important areas. And they don't seem to have realised the scale of change in fishing rights they face if there is no agreement. It is clear that time is incredibly short. Ratification puts more time pressure on the EU than the UK. The EU have to translate any agreement into 24 languages and get it through the European Parliament. The UK will continue to work with energy and ambition to see if the remaining gaps can be closed. We hope for the same from the EU. So the message is that the EU27 need to instruct the EU Commission to change Michel Barnier's negotiating mandate, or the Scrabble boards, putters, petonque balls and hammocks will be the only implements being used for the remainder of the negotiations. Anyway, while the negotiators try and fill the hours trying to look busy, the former Tory MP for Broxtow and arch-remainer Anna Soubry behave yourselves... Yes, Anna Soubry has been calling for an extension to the Brexit process. Well, there's a surprise. Not. She was responding to a Robert Peston tweet a couple of days ago where he said, Another striking characteristic of today's Bank of England projections is that UK GDP, or national income, is set to shrink by 11% for the whole of 2020. A record. We are losing more than one in every £10 of our income, one of the worst performances in the world. The fall in US GDP is forecast at just 3.75%. The euro area shrinkage is 6.75% and the global decline is projected at 5.25%. Given that the virus is the same virus everywhere, it is difficult to argue that the UK's policy response to it has been economically optimal, even adjusting for the UK's disproportionate reliance on services that thrive on the kind of human contact that the virus has made dangerous. It is not over till it is over, but the combination of excess deaths and excess economic loss in the UK raises big questions for the government which to me meant that Peston was focusing on the pandemic being the problem here, because he was talking about 2020, this year. But Subri went straight in with the Brexit angle, tweeting, Yet more evidence to support why we should extend the transition period. British business needs stability and certainty and deal or no deal. Leaving the single market and customs union in eight weeks' time will further harm our fragile economy. But as I've pointed out before, to even try and extend the Brexit process now would soak up a lot of Number 10 and civil service time, probably more than these Brexit negotiations are. Because the EU starts a whole fresh seven-year budget cycle in the new year, which would have to be completely rejigged to include the UK and would mean a lot of parliamentary time taken up here in amending the Withdrawal Agreement Act and related legislation, including the reams of statutory instruments that have been issued for Brexit. And then everyone would be moaning that not enough effort was being focused on the pandemic. Surely Anna Soubry understands the complexity of all of that, or maybe not. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about these Brexit non-talks? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.